So the fine folks over at Staples just told me that the boxes I ordered have arrived in store. So let's go pick them up. There she is, we've arrived. Oh my goodness, so exciting. Professional. We got them. They're all there. Big ass boxes. So if you don't know, Staples does this thing uh, where it doesn't price match in store to the website, um, if you didn't know. So I looked at these in the shop behind me, I walked in um, and they were at least 20 pounds more expensive than if I ordered them online and came and got them the next day. So maybe something you didn't know, but if you're gonna order stuff from Staples, do it online because uh, you can get it delivered to the store like I did, so you don't have to wait because that's not going through my letterbox. And it's like nearly half the price sometimes. So fun fact, let's get driving again. I'm using two different sizes of box for this project. There's the big one, which is nine liters, and then there's the small one, which is 0.9 liters. Now, I don't know what those are in American Freedom units, but you can probably do the math yourself. It's just about the capacity of the inside of the box. The reason I chose these really useful boxes, which is the brand name, is that they're very, very sturdy. I've used them before, and they also stack really, really well, so. Which is super helpful for what I'm trying to do. Also really helpful is the fact that these small 0.9 liters fit in perfectly. So I can stack two inside each one of these boxes. I can actually fit six in total. Three side by side and two tall inside this. So I could fit six of these small 0.9 liter boxes inside this large one and still have space. Another integral part of this system is of course the label maker which is how I'm going to label everything up and keep it all organized. Now it's very hard to design a system in advance without having worked with the stuff and really looked at what you have. So this system will alter and will change as it goes along. And I'm kind of finding my way as I play with them and the storage devices and see what works best. First up though, I wanna make a box for the USA singles and a box for the rest of the world singles, which I sorted it in the last episode. This little list I made in the first video of the kind of 0.9 boxes I want to fill or at least work towards and that may change in future but for now I think it's a good start.
we have these larger boxes for the, the bigger genres of pencil, if you will, the jumbos, the mechanicals, that kind of thing. But I have a lot of this. This is just like unsharpened or factory sharpened pencils I really like. So we've got the semi-hex, we've got the 1900 Toisson d'Or, and we've got the uh, USA Gold. I keep a lot of these just because I bought packs or was given packs, and I have quite a few unused. I like keeping them on hand because it's great to give to people. I like having a stockpile that I can use, but that doesn't really fit. And these boxes are like three pounds each. So it's, it's kind of expensive to buy these just to put, you know, those into. So I needed a better system of storage for those. And the answer is this. These are clear pencil cases. Uh, they are used a lot in the UK for exams and the like, because you can obviously see what's in them. You can't bring notes into your, uh, your exam and cheat. Uh, these are very, very cheap. They're about 50p each uh, from a local store, Home Bargains. And they are very, very good because they fit a black wing, an unsharpened black wing, which is very impressive. I won't be using them for that, but it's still, it's impressive that it's able to. And the reason I chose these is because it's gonna be very, very easy to stick labels to them. It's also very, very easy to see what's in them, how many I have, and everything like that. And also being 49p each means I can get 30 or 40 of them as I need, and it's only gonna cost me maybe 20 pounds or, or 30 bucks or something. So the first step is to take all of these little sets of pencils like this and organize them into these bags. Now the reason I chose this specific size of box, which is the nine liter really useful box, is that by the dimensions, it should fit this perfectly. Let's give it a go. Now, as you can see, these fit absolutely perfectly. They're just the right size. They're kind of slanted over a bit because there's not a full amount of them yet. We can easily see they fit in, the lid fits on, it all closes up, locks up tight. And we have these secured. They're not gonna rattle around, they're not gonna get broken. So I'm really, really pleased with this system. I think it's definitely a smarter way to store them. And what I'm gonna do is label up each one of these bags with what's in it. This is a Tiger brand, sort of generic black cheap pencils. But I need a whole bunch more of these bags. Um, I've got 20, kind of bought out all the local stores. I need to go and get some more. But as you can see, this is kind of the system. Now I have four of these big nine liter boxes and I have four of these 0.9 liter boxes. I'm probably going to need more 0.9s, but for the, not, the meantime, I've got enough of these big ones, I think. Probably gonna have one box for vintage pencils, one box for American, one box for maybe European, and then kind of go from there. There's, I obviously have more of certain pencils and less of others. So it's about finding what is the best system and that obviously will evolve over time. But I thought I would bring you folks along for the journey and let you see how I developed the system, what I'm doing and how I'm learning. So I have stuff like this, which is really cool. This is like uh, vintage Eberhard Faber pencils and I managed to fit the boxes into these little bags because I want to keep the boxes because they themselves are very, very nice. And these are my Russian pencils in boxes, uh, also in a bag, just to keep them together because they're very unique. I don't have any others like it. So I don't want to get them lost or mix them up in a big pile. So the next step is to find out which big boxes are going to have which pencils in them. So I'm gonna keep all my black wings. That's how many black wings I have, by the way. I'm gonna keep those in the boxes that they came in because I think the boxes are good. I don't think I need to change anything with them. They're fine for storage. They look great, they're sturdy, and there's no point taking them out of this, binning this nice box and, and buying this when it's, it's really not necessary. Most other pencils don't come in a nice sturdy box like this, so I will have to take them out and bag them, but for the black wings at least, I think they will be fine on their own in like that. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna box up the black wings and some of the other boxes of pencils and get one of these big nine liters done and dusted uh, so I can start storing things and get my desk back because I've had enough of things everywhere. It's too messy for me, I don't like it. So I've arrived at this from my USA box. It's kind of a work in progress, as I said, but this kind of give you an idea of what I'm aiming for. So we have the singles. These are all the pencils that I only have one of. Maybe it's, uh, none of these are vintage. They're all just ones that I happen to have only one of for whatever reason. So maybe in trade or someone's given them to me or whatever. So these are just singles. US singles, ready to mingle or not mingle as the case might be. And then we also have black wings. So we have 602, MMX, Pearl, 
volumes edition one and then back here we have all my American pencils so those are some uh, Palomino coloring pencils we got some Ticonderogas we got some USA Gold we got some semi hex some cedar points and some black Ticonderogas so the idea here is to try and corral all of my American pencils into one of these boxes let's put it all away and see what it looks like and weighs all boxed up So this is the uh, USA box. As you can see, things don't really move around too much. There's a little bit of movement from the singles, but uh, we could put some padding in if we really want to. Um, keeps everything organized. I'm gonna label up this big box at some stage. But you can see that's it's a really concise way of storing probably a couple hundred pencils in there. You know, there's maybe 30 in there. Each one of these probably holds about 20, 12, 20 in some of them. And each one of those is 12. So there's, you know, there's a hundred at least pencils in there and they're all nicely stored, separated, organized in a way that makes sense. So there we have it, episode two of this pencil organization project. We have started making some really good headway with these big nine liter boxes and these smaller 0.9 liter boxes. And also these little uh, pencil doodads for storing our smaller, you know, little collections. So I think I'll keep building this system, I'll keep working on it to try and build something that is much more responsive, much more uh, accessible. I got some big plans for this kind of thing. I'd love to work in some sort of RFID tagging system and a relational database, some way to keep track of how many pencils I have, where they are, how many we have, checking them in and out, almost like store inventory or something like that. That's something I'd love to build too, maybe using Raspberry Pi or something like that to manage it all. But for now, it's about getting them physically put away in some sort of order so that I can actually move. And also so that we can have, you know, a little bit more coordination about knowing, yeah, black wings are in that box or, you know, Kohenor's in that box or, you know, coloring pencils are in that bag. It's kind of a bit more order, a bit more structure, which should help me uh, to make better videos because I know where everything is and what I actually have. Thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this, leave a like or hit subscribe if you haven't already. More weird and wonderful content like this coming and bigger and better videos in the future. Thank you and stay tuned for part three coming up soon. We've shown you in this movie the basic fundamentals necessary to produce on paper the pictures you see in your mind's eye.